All right, these are the practice problems, and I highly, highly recommend that you work through these problems on your own, and if you get stuck, come back and watch the solutions. As always, if you enjoy this content, like and subscribe. Okay, the first problem says a ball is thrown straight up from the surface of the earth, so we have a ball that's thrown up. And which statement best describes the ball's velocity and acceleration at the top of its flight? So the ball does this and comes back down. So when the ball gets to the top, it's not moving, so its velocity is zero. But remember that acceleration is the result of a net force. So at the top, there is still a force acting on the ball. That's the force of gravity. So that becomes our net force, and because there's a net force on the ball, the ball is undergoing an acceleration. And the direction of that acceleration is in the direction of the net force, which is down. So uh, the answer then is 2. The velocity is 0, and its acceleration is non-zero. Its actual acceleration is 9.8 meters per second squared down. Okay, this question says, a space probe produces a radio signal pulse. Later in the course, I wrote this down for you, later in the course you will learn that radio waves travel at the speed of light. All electromagnetic waves travel at the speed of light. And on the reference table, we have right here the speed of light in the vacuum. The symbol is C. This comes from the Latin silitras which means speed, um, is 3 times 10 to the 8th meters per second. So because this is traveling at a constant velocity, we can say that V average is 3 times 10 to the 8th meters per second. They give us the time, 12.3 seconds, and they're asking for us for the distance that's traveled. So that's going to be V equals D over T or 3 times 10 to the 8th meters per second equal to d over 12.3 seconds and that gives us a distance of 3.7 times 10 to the 9th meters. Okay, the graph below represents the relationship between velocity and time for an object moving in a straight line. What's the object's acceleration? So we're going to do this in the next episode where we talk about graphs. And it turns out that for a velocity time graph, the slope of the line is equal to the acceleration. But we don't have to do it that way. We can do it by simply picking some points on the graph and using that um, as our quantity data. So for example, if we pick one second, and I kind of like this to start the graph because that's at zero meters per second, and we go up to three seconds, then our time that is covered, our change in time, would be two seconds. So we can say that our time is two seconds. Specifically, this is change in time. And then our change in velocity during that time is going to be from 0 to 20 meters per second. So our change in velocity is 20 meters per second. And our uh, acceleration is unknown. So we can use A equals delta V over T, and that's delta T, it's the same value. And that's going to be 20 meters per second divided by two seconds, and that's going to give us an acceleration of 10 meters per second squared. Question four. A student wishes to record a seven and a half kilogram watermelon colliding with the ground. Now, it gives you this, and we're dealing with a falling watermelon. And remember that the acceleration is not dependent on mass. So this information is irrelevant to this problem. So it says calculate how far the watermelon must fall. So we're looking for D. 
freely from rest. We're in free fall, so we know that the acceleration is 9.8. So we have 9.8 meters per second squared. And I am going to call down to be positive in this problem. So that is going to be a positive acceleration. And uh, it's falling from rest, so VI is 0 meters per second. And it would be traveling 29 meters per second the instant it hits the ground. Technically, we're really dealing with the, the instant before it hits the ground. I would like it if they had worded that a little bit differently. So that's going to be uh, VF. And then we can use VF squared equals VI squared plus 2AD. And our VF squared, that's going to be... 29 meters per second, and we have to square that. VI is zero, so that drops out. Equals two times 9.8 meters per second squared times D. And our D in this is gonna come out to be 42.9 meters. This comes out positive, which agrees with our system, which is down. The, ball, the watermelon falls down, down is positive, so our answer comes out as a positive value. Number five, starting from rest, VI is zero. A car travels 18 meters, D equals 18M. It accelerates uniformly for three seconds, so T is three seconds. What is the car's acceleration? So we just need to choose a formula here. And the best one that's going to work is D equals VIT plus one half AT squared. VI is zero, so this cancels out. We're left with 18 meters equals one half A times three seconds squared. So A comes out to four meters per second squared. Number six, while taking off from an aircraft carrier, a jet starts from rest, VI is zero, accelerates uniformly to a final speed of 40 meters per second. VF is 40 meters per second. On a runway that's 70 meters long, so meters lets us know that's distance or displacement, what is the magnitude of acceleration of the jet? So that's going to be VF squared equals VI squared plus 2AD. So we have 40 meters per second squared equals VI is zero, so that drops out. Two times A times 70 meters. And if we do the math for that one, we end up with 11.4 meters per second squared, which is gonna be 11 on this. Seven, a six kilogram cart initially traveling at four meters per second, meters per second initially, so that's gonna be VI is four meters per second, accelerates uniformly at 0.5 meters per second squared. So that's our acceleration for three seconds. So that's our time. What is the speed of the car at the end of this three seconds? So that's gonna be our VF. So we have VF equals VI plus AT. VF equals four meters per second plus 0.5 meters per second squared times three seconds. And that's going to give us a VF of 5.5 meters per second. An object starts from rest, VI is zero falls freely, that tells us that it's in free fall, so we know the acceleration is 9.8 meters per second squared down. For 40 meters, so D is 40 meters, 
So if we're putting that in as positive, I'm calling down to be positive, it's falling down, um, near the surface of planet P. Now, here's the problem. Falls freely at 9.8 meters per second squared is only true near the surface of the Earth, but we're on some other planet P, so that acceleration is not 9.8 meters per second squared down. So if it takes a time, if it takes a time of four seconds, so t is four seconds, what is the magnitude, meaning we don't have to care about the direction, of the acceleration on this planet? So in this one, we're trying to solve for a. So the easiest way to do this one is with d equals v i t plus one half a t squared. It was dropped from rest, so the VIT goes to zero, and we have 40 meters equals one-half times A is unknown in this problem, times four seconds squared, and that's going to give us an acceleration of five meters per second squared. Okay, number nine. So, a car has an initial velocity of 16 meters per second east, and we can see from here we need to take direction into account. So, if we have east in this direction, and we have west this way, I'm going to choose to call this way positive, and this way negative. So, our east is positive, our west is negative. So a car with an initial velocity, vi meters per second, so that's 16 meters per second, uh, to the east, which we said was positive, uniformly to 6 meters per second east, so it slows down to 6 meters per second, and this takes 4 seconds. And what's the acceleration? Acceleration is question mark. So we do VF equals VI plus AT. We have 6 meters per second equals 16 meters per second plus A times 4 seconds. And that's going to give us an acceleration of negative 2.5 meters per second squared. In our system, negative is to the left, and that means left is west. So we can say the acceleration is 2.5 meters per second squared west. Lastly, number 10. We have a car traveling in a straight line with an initial speed of 8 meters per second. VI is 8 meters per second. And it accelerates uniformly to a speed of 14 meters per second. Meters per second. That tells us we're dealing with velocity over a distance of 44 meters. And what is the magnitude of the acceleration of the car? Once again, they said magnitude, so we don't have to worry about direction. So we're going to use VF squared equals VI squared plus 2AD. And our VF squared is 14, our VI is 8, plus 2 times A times 44 meters. And if you do the math on that, you get 1.5 meters per second squared.